Hey, Father Columbia here. I just wanted to give a massive thank you to everyone of you who has been supporting our mission here at Call to More. Some of you have been given for years, some of you are just new, but you guys and the grace of God are what help us keep doing this, keep doing these videos. Hopefully they've been a blessing to you. We know we've got heard back from many of you that they have, so that's just, that's why we do it. That's why we do this. And just a huge, huge thank you because we could not do it without you, so. Nice one. If you haven't been given up to this point and it's something that you think you might be able to do, then you could just click on the banner banner above. Yes, the banner above or in the description below, there is a link. If you wanna become a regular donor or just a once off, uh, anything at all would be really, really gratefully received and a huge uh, help in our mission. Thank you guys, God bless you. Today, I wanna to talk to you about addiction. Addiction, in some ways, it's a little like talking about like demonic oppression to explain what I mean by that, because I, I don't necessarily mean the two are like equated or anything like that. But somehow every Christian is in a fight against spiritual powers, you know, so there is that reality going on. I'm being messed with here. There's there's something more than just me and my own human weakness involved here. There actually might be uh, an evil spirit. And that's a real thing not to freak anybody else out, but that sometimes can freak people out. <gasps> How to bring this up in a conversation, you know, um, maybe there's a demon involved in your situation. Yeah, that can, that's, that's hard to bring up, let's face it. But it is a normal thing and we shouldn't get freaked out by it. Now, here's the connection, finally. Sometimes when you say to people that there might be an addiction involved in their struggle with sin, they also can freak out, I found. We can have this impression, and you know what, this is also a third, a third thing. So the need for deliverance prayer sometimes can freak people out. The fact that I might have an addiction, I might need help with that. The fact that I might need to go for counseling or that that might help. But again, lots of people don't go, oh. Although recently I've actually found people much more open to that proposal. Folks, I propose counseling to so many people. I've recommended for everybody. It's not an admittance that I am hopelessly flawed. It's the admitting that I'm human and I need help. And also there's like people who are trained experts who just work with normal people like you and me. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely completely out of my mind, insane. And I have to then go and, you know, get strapped in and injected with stuff. It's like, no, 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 no. I've been to counseling myself. And like I said, I recommend it to everybody. In my vocation work, I will frequently ask the guys I'm talking to, in fact, all of them, you know, have you ever gotten counseling? And some of them have uh, just been really humble and admitted they were afraid to say yes because they were afraid that that would actually look bad, right? And yeah, I could understand that, you know, I was like, oh, you've gotten counseling. Have you got issues? <laughs> like, at this point, being a priest, I know everyone's got issues, <laughs> especially me. It's not an issue of do you have issues? The issue is, are you looking at them? Are you open to talking about them and working on them? So back to the addiction thing. Sometimes our issues are addictive. We have like a, a bit of a compulsion to do it. So it's not just a free choice of, oh, hmm, will I sin or won't I sin? Will I use X, Y, or Z to escape, to numb my pain? Because most addiction, you could look at it from the perspective of numbing of pain, from escaping from ourselves, from our emotions, from life. There's different kind of ways you could look at what an addiction is. And there's so many of them. You could be addicted to working. Is your work getting in the way of you living life healthily and fully? Some addictions are, are like, you're addicted to a substance. That's the ones we're most used to, right? But you can also be addicted to what they call processes. So there's something I do that I'm addicted to. Gambling is a great example of that. That's not the substance. You're not injecting you know, the gambling into your veins, but it's still addictive. The other way you can actually look at kind of the framework you can view addiction through is mood control or mood altering. I don't like the way I feel, so I'm gonna do this activity because it shifts my mood, it makes me feel better about myself, about life, whatever. And that's another kind of defining factor of an addiction that it has negative life impacts. So it's not just, you know, oh, it's just a little thing on the side. And by the way, we can deny and convince ourselves that it doesn't have life impacts. Is it affecting your sleep? Media and TV, phones, shopping. Basically, we can get addicted to anything. Making videos, 
This isn't my fifth video today, honestly. We can get addicted to these things and we know it's an addiction if there's kind of a compulsive, it's not like this, oh, will I do it or won't I? No, I think I can give it a go. I'll give, give it a miss today. Are you able to say, oh no, without feeling a uh, in your heart, can you just give the thing a miss for a day, for a week, for a month with no, no worries at all? Could you leave it forever? And people say, oh no, I could leave it at any moment, totally. I just choose not to. Mm, mm. Hmm. Well, then you look at the thing of like, okay, what negative life impact is it having on you and on other people? With lots of sin, particularly sexual sin, you know, there's major addictive qualities to that. Lots of folks entered into that when they were young to mood control. If there was tough situations at home or in life or just towards themselves in their own heart, some form of acting out in that way can alter the mood and they can kind of get addicted then to that way of controlling their emotions because they didn't learn maybe how to control their emotions when they were kids from their parents because their parents didn't really have those skills. So they found other ways. Anyway, I say all of this because I just want to normalize these different tools that are out there, guys. If we cut ourselves off from something that's actually really good and could really help us follow Jesus better, but are we afraid because we don't want to be associated with somebody who's we've seen begging on the street, who's clearly a slave to a substance? And we're like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm never like them. Are you saying I'm like them? Uh. Well, maybe it doesn't surface the way it does for other people, but really all sin is a form of addiction. It's just maybe quieter. It's more culturally acceptable than my man sitting on the side of the road begging for money to get his next hit. But there's ways that I do this, guys. I wonder if there's ways that you do nice little culturally acceptable addictions, but they're still having massive effects on our us, on our freedom, on our capacity to live for Jesus. Maybe they're the thing that keeps bringing us back to the same old sin over and over. Oh, you never get free. And there's this huge resource out there therapy counseling that's amazing if you can get the right therapist it's always great if you can get somebody who's also of the same faith as you and really like gets the gospel and isn't gonna call you weird for believing in god i mean that's a huge bonus but either way if you can just get a counselor who kind of works for you and can help you understand yourself and understand why you act the way you act and how maybe your, your past impacts your present and your future and how to find ways to get more free of that or just to manage that it's all helpful. Or, uh, yeah, the other tool is, you know, deliverance prayer. Um, that's maybe not talked about as much, but it is out there, especially um, on a thing called Unbound. You could look that up. Certainly here in Ireland, there's lots of people who pray with folks, you know, to, to get free, that there might be some kind of spiritual problem, not just a psychological problem or not just uh, an addictive problem. Anyway, these tools are out there. Why would, we, why would we say no to them? Can we humble ourselves and go, huh, is that a thing? Am I addicted to people, places, or things? Is there stuff in my life that's negatively impacting my walking out, following Jesus and living the gospel? Or is it negatively impacting my time, my sleep, my health, my job? To look at that and then say, right, what, what, could, what step could I take? If you feel any kind of fear or shame around that, guys, I'm totally with you. But let's not miss this opportunity, this tool. Make good use of it. And the big thing is to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves and say, do you know what? I need the help. So I'm going to do it. And it can be a real life changer, guys. A freedom that you've never known before. Yes, yeah, so there you go. That's my, little, that's my little spiel. God bless you. I hope that's helpful. And um, have a lovely day or morning or evening or whatever it is you're having. Bye.